Hello, Star Wars fans. How are you doing? My name is Gerald, and I am the proud builder of R2-D2 that you see here. Now, unlike other R2 units out there, he's pretty unique, because I can make him out of pallet wood. Everything you see here, the legs, the body, the head, the feet, all made of pallet wood. So, let's get started. One of the first questions I was asked was, does he roll? Yes, he does. And then he moves back, forth, you can move around 360 pretty fluidly, as a matter of fact. And I do use skateboard wheels. So he has two skateboard wheels on each foot. And he has a swivel roller for his front foot. And that's how he can roll. Next, yes, his head does move. That was the question I was asked. Does his head move back and forth? Yes, it does. You can look to the right, look to the left, just like so. So, yeah. Next question I was asked was, does he talk? And with the help of a Bluetooth speaker and a wireless connection here, I think he can. That's a little effect there. So yeah, he does talk. And a lot of kids were pretty amazed at that. So yeah. Some stats real quick, he is 32 inches tall, from shoulder to shoulder he's 2 feet wide, and he weighs in at 35 pounds. So in a nutshell, that's R2-D2. Next up is my sign back here, it's all made from pallet wood, same thing. I can get all the little boards here, take them off, squish it together, nail it in place, and router out the little letters that you see here. So yeah, and then this here is all stain. It's not paint, it's wood stain. Same thing with RPG 2 here. I do stain on, on all of them. So all the little brown pieces that you see here, dark pieces, it's all wood stain. I could have painted him white and blue, like, you know, from the movies, but he's made of wood, and I wanted to keep him wood colored. You get the general idea of who he is. I just like the idea of using wood accents, you know, pristine accents for good details, you know, things like that, so. All right, well, let me give you a detailed tour of R2. All right, let's see here. Here we go. Okay, as you can see there, give you a nice walk around. So, yep, there's his legs, his top, his foot. And yeah, the pieces here, these pieces here, I had to bend. It took about five or six days to slowly bend the wood here. I had to soak it in water, bend it a little bit, soak it again, bend it some more. So yeah, that's that. Next up for the vents here, I had to rot out a little pocket, stain it, and I had to make a wood piece use a router, make the vents, cut it to shape, and glue it into place. And all the lines that you see here are all done with a soldering iron. Up and down, up and down. This is all routered out. And these here are just pieces that I glued on. Just like these, you know, his front fan, his side fan, I think. Even the side vents here. I had to router out and stain. And, yep. All soldering iron right there. So, yep, that's his front. And as you notice here, all the little nail holes. I wanted to keep as many of the characteristics of a pallet. You know, like the nail holes, the cracks, the knots. I wanted to keep all of that in place. I could have smoothed them down, filled in the holes, made it look nice and pretty. But he's made of wood, and I wanted you to see that he was actually made of wood. So, yep, that's his leg. His foot. Let's see if I can get it zoom in here. I had to use six pieces of wood glued together. So you can get one, two, three, four, then five over there, and six on the bottom. Glue it all together. Use a handsaw, cut it into shape, sand it down, make it look nice and neat. Add the battery pack around back, and yeah, just to make his foot. And with the foot, I had to gouge it out, stick his leg in. And I didn't use any details on the legs. I could have, but I just chose not to. And yep, that's R2.
Yep, and he's eyeball here. I'd use a router, make the circle, smooth out the edges here, make them nice and round as close as possible. And then from there I used wood stain. Now normally with wood stain you apply it, you wipe it off, and you get this kind of color here, this color. But to the, get the uh, gloss finish here, you have to leave it on overnight. So the, so the stain had to stay on overnight. Made it nice and shiny. So yeah, it does look pretty good. He can look at you. He can look away. <laughs> oh, and right over here is the flashlight holder. So if you look at that. Just a little flashlight. Yeah, and that's it. And if you remember from the movie Return of the Jedi on Jabba Sail Barge, he has a little hidden compartment. And there it is. And what's inside the hidden compartment? A lightsaber. So yes. Definitely wanted to have that. This edition here was something that I definitely wanted. I had to think of this way beforehand. And I think it's a great edition. All the kids loved it. They loved that little feature right there. And while we're on the back side of R2 here, along with his little lightsaber holder, his back hatch, he does have a hatch back here. I just kind of used uh, hinges. Let's see if I get that open. And there you go. He's got a little hidden compartment back here. And this is where I put the Bluetooth speaker. So, yeah, the Bluetooth speaker is here. And that goes inside, and that's how he can talk. So yeah, just a little, a little hatch for hiding stuff. Cash, gold, diamonds, jewels. <laughs> so yep, that's R2-D2 right there. I think he looks pretty good. Yeah, there he is, R2-D2. Okay, next on to the sign. Yeah, like I said. I tried to go on eBay, Amazon, StarWars.com. And I couldn't find a banner. I couldn't find a flag big enough. So I had to make this the last minute. You know, that's why you can see all the little router digs that I did. I wasn't paying too close attention. <laughs> I was in a hurry. I wanted to get it done. So yeah, you can you can see all the little imperfections up close. But from a distance, you really can't tell. So I think it looks pretty good. And the whole point of this Archie project was our local library was having a pallet throwdown, as I said before, for prizes. And as you can see here, all right, first place, that's right. So I got a gift card, some cool tools from Lowe's, and I got a pallet pal. So yeah, this will come in handy next year. So this will definitely come in handy. I pop it in under a pallet, pop it up, and all my pallets are, you know, taken, disassembled, hassle-free. It's a pain in the ass. So this will definitely come in handy next year. And what did I build old RT here with? Here's my workbench. Not much. I all I had to work with was just like a drill, a router, some files. Uh, block plane, yeah, that's pretty much it. The block plane had to be used for each of his pieces here. As you can see, each side is beveled, and I had to use the plane there to slowly take off wood, take off wood, make it into shape, and I had to do that uh, 21 times. I don't know if I showed you, but yeah. For Archie's head, is 21 pieces all the way around. Each side had to be exactly the same length, and at the right angle for it to piece for it to piece together nicely. Same thing with his body. There's 14 pieces all the way around. Each piece was a certain width, but it also had to be beveled at a certain angle for it all to join correctly to make a round barrel. So that's what I use there. And let's see what else. Um, yeah, my inspiration. All I had was my handsaw, coping saw. That's it. And to make his dome, his head move, this is what I used here. You can kind of envision this. I stuck this old bicycle rim inside RTD2's head. So, and then I attached it just to a board connecting the two shoulders, and voila! And that's how I got his head to move. Like I said, I spent $10 on him for the front wheel 
and the hinges around the back. So, yep, that's it. That is R2-D2. I'm pretty proud of him myself. And I wanted to show him off a little bit. So, there you go. Thank you very much for watching.